Right. Now let's uh, follow some demonstration uh, on Scala collection types. I'll start the demonstration with arrays. So if you want to define an array in Scala, let, let me start in Scala. And when you want to define the Scala array in the k marks, variable marks, type is array, and we can give the marks of different students like that. So it's created marks array with these elements. So when you call marks uh, dot length, Sorry, I misspelled the marks here. So you see, I create marks here. Now I have. I misspelled again. Marks in me are case marks, right? So it create the marks array, right? In me are case marks. If I want to see that, I put here. So you see, this array with those elements. Uh, so when you want to, well, let's say I want to get the length of that, I call length method. So length of this array is six. Then if you type like head, it gives me the first element. So when I call like the chain, it returns the array except the head. So when I call the first element, oh, there are no such. So let's see the uh, methods available in mass. Input mass. Array name dot and then press tab character tab. So you see there are hundreds of methods available in this marks. Predator, find, flat, plot, two vector, zip, union, so many tail, take, drop, so many methods. You can explore those methods yourself. Uh, so I have shown you some of them. Let's say you would like to write your methods uh, uh, to kind of like, uh, or you want to kind of add an element to those marks array. Okay, this is my marks array. So I would like to add an element to this particular array. So if you want to add an element, so you know, what you have to do is marks. Uh, you say the elements, let's say you want to add it to the beginning. So you give the element name, then just call it mass. That's how it works. So let's see. So the other other way around. So plus uh, uh, call. Right, we put a plus call. So it add 
new elements from the beginning. We do like if you want to add an element to the tail, so you type box, then all and plus, and the element you want to add. So you see that add the element to the tail. So I add here 45. But actually I'm not saved it in some array because of that. Uh, so still my base array is marks. So you see my base array is still marks. I just add it, it returns that, but I never assign that back to the marks. So that's why the marks array is still like that. But I don't want to alter that. So let's say I want to give that to a different array, then I need to assign it like here. Then you then M2 equal like that. So then M2 consists of the new array. Okay. So if two arrays need to be added together, so we could do like that. Then we have M2 array plus we do plus plus and then we say uh, marks it so you see these two arrays add together so these are the basic operators available in there Let's say we want to create an array where someone read elements from the keyboard. So uh, if we want to implement a method to do so, we can write a simple recursive method like that. So I say read array, and then I want to type how many elements I want to read, and then it returns an array of integers from type this array of integers right so this is the definition so i say if i is less than one then i say return uh, empty error yes what i want to say is Give some form. Like that. And then create smaller dot I order STD in dot create int. and add it to add it recursively to this method like that right close it and close the function so okay it return an error This is I need to import and as well as I misspell here the array. So I forgot to import uh, std int. Right. So now I, using arrays, arrow keys, we can get the things which we previously typed. So this is if i check it is array then as i just print this and then here i want to do like that okay array 
color standard info and then uh, add to the table like that and follows the function. So you see my read array method is ready. So I use read array method to read the variable called mass now. So I have to view how many elements, let's say five elements. So it asks me to enter first element, second, third, and fourth, and fifth. You see, it return array with one, two, three, four, five, five elements. And as I need to the marks, now my marks array is this. So you see, we can simply define the recursive method to read elements. So if I want to print those elements one by one, maybe I can write a method for a print array, which take uh, array, yeah, integer array. integer as inputs uh, integer array as uh, input and uh, output type is will be any and I say if whatever this array x is empty not empty right if array is not empty if that array even array is not empty i say print ln s add And all the same method print array with x tail. x dot tail. So you see, I define a print array. So I use now print array and pass my marks array to that. You see it printed elements of this array one after other. I can use I think for each loop for you that as well. Let's try marks. So, so by putting a few letters and put tab key we can get the methods for each. Each I I see transform by to print L N I. So you see the same. So this is actually the way we implement it in detail. So Array anyway has a free build command for it to get a check. So let's say we want to write a method to add elements of array. So I can write maybe I can modify my print table method to do so. I say maybe add add take array and here need to return the addition so it should be integer so if array is empty now i return zero else 
I have written uh, x dot head plus head plus at t. I add head to the tail. Right, All right. So I use now F marks. It will be the addition of all marks in the array. So like that, we can find different function on top of those arrays. So let's say we want to implement a method to get the maximum value of the array. So actually it has a command to do so if you want, I think. So let's say marks, uh, as it has max, return the maximum value. So similarly, we can write a method to do so recursive method if you wish. So I write that fx max, which take, uh, so that's how this max operator is implemented somehow. So we say max array, which is integer array, return integer, that is the maximum element in this so I give them my base condition is if x length equal to one, then I assume maximum value is the head. Else, what I do. I take a maximum value of tail to a variable called temporary, I take the maximum value of the x tail, tail of the array, by recursively calling the same function, and check whether if x head is greater than this temporary value. If so, x is still the maximum. Else, temporary value is the maximum. I close the else part and the function. So then I call max, my max method with array mass. See, I get the same results like that. So that is maximum recursive method. So if you want to implement minimum methods, so I can do like that, you know. I call me, and if length equal one, I assume head is the minimum. Then as I take the minimum to a temporary variable, I recall, recursively recall minimum methods to the tail until I get the value. And then I compare where the head is smaller than the temporary value. So head is the minimum, otherwise temporary. The value is the minimum. I close that. So this is my minimum method. So then I call minimum with one array. So it returns the minimum value in there. So similarly, once array has the minimum method, so it returns the same. You see. So my recursive function is also correct. Like that. We can build different functions. Right.
Mano, esse é o string array. O que é o integer array? You can define string arrays like that. So I create a string array called name. This array, which may have different names. Because like that. So then this array consists of different strings. So I can access those names now, like set names too. So it's come on this. This is third element. Two is third element. Those array indexes are starting from zero. So if I say name zero, we'll return the first element. Also, like that. So you can replace the names, like you can assign different names, like if I want to replace the first element with different name like they say but no I can do like that so then my names are right as replaced by like as you see array elements are mutable we can change those elements in there right now let's have a look on the list. So we can create a list and we call tools. If I run tools. Like that. Oh, this is the list. Sorry, I forget to mention list. If I don't do so, it's created too. So this is the list. So this list all good. So we can get head Oops. first element and here we return the list except the first value. Then we can get I think there is a look at the first. So you can see the methods but pressing tab here. So you see again hundreds of methods. Hundreds of methods are there with list. Operators, operators with the list class as well. So, fine. So, let's say uh, we have it is immutable, that means we cannot change those values. Immutable, we cannot change those values, but we can add some values to the list. So, for example, we have now. Uh, at least we define if I want to add uh, new elements to this list, I can say like that maybe uh, orange. Orange need to be added. So we put the new element and two colons and the name. Oops. You see, it's created a new list which included the orange. Like that, we can add elements to the list. So there are some plenty of operations available. We can add two lists together, I think, like here. Tools. And we add quotes. 
So actually, this include this list into that. If you put like that, so I have to put three columns. It create a cat list. So have a look difference between that and this. So you see this has apple, banana, mango, apple, banana, mango. Because this same list I added together. This has a list. First element is the list. And with that, rest of the elements. This can have multiple types, multiple values. So first element of that list is that. So actually this will add the element to the list. So you see, two colon will add the element. So this should take it as element. So that's why we get one list inside the other list. So if we do three columns, two lists add will together. Since we have one list, so we have the same list, so we get the big list. So other property you can see it here, it has duplicates elements. Right? So when you go to the other time that is set, it may not have the so for example, let's define the set with the same type maybe. Um, I say very well uh, set correlation and set maybe with numbers one, two, three. Six and we will repeat six back and then seven. Seven like that. So I have given same number two twice, but when it creates a set, it has only one. So it sets may not contain duplicates. Because and also it is immutable. We cannot change those. So all list and set has for each element. So if we want to print all element, so we can use for each. And then say each element x transform to whatever. So I say print element and say x here. Okay. I can get all elements in that set. Similarly in the list. So I have a put list. So when I say like that, it get all elements in the put list. So the main difference in the set may not have duplicates, but list has. So that is the difference between list and the set. So if you don't want to store the duplicates element, if you want to have unique elements, so you need to define them as sets, otherwise you define them as list. Set or list, both are immutable. Plus they can have different types, different data types if you wish. Right. So set also has all difficult, all default methods like uh, head, tail, and so on. Like I say, S1 head, return first element then tail return except the first tail like that this is my set this returns the rest of the thing except the first tail so it has all like minimum method and maximum method like that if you want to see all the methods we put the set variable dot and that will show all the operators and the methods available in the set collection. Okay, now let's have a look on the collection type map. Collection type map has key value pairs. So if you want to create a such collection type, let's say color, we can define different color values. See map. So we say maybe red has uh, 
new error it has maybe this has some accessible values like ff and maybe like uh, black we have uh, the value like uh, and all zeros and then maybe white so, yeah, they run like I, I, I believe what are the real values I just put some numbers here We can define the map. So if we want to then get hello black, we can type the key and it returns the value. Arrays, elements of the arrays we can access using indexes. The elements of the map we can access using key values. So again, if you want to print all elements, so we can use for each row. For that, we call color key. Keys will return all keys. Is you see iteratable object it returns. So in this iteratable object have a method called for each. So we access each element and transfer to some operation. So we print and then maybe uh, X. This is right. Why didn't reach? So you will get that by one more So it get the date. So like that we can access the element in the map. Map also has like uh, several operators and uh, methods. So in order to see them, we say color dot tab. So these are the methods. Like we can add two maps together, add the element to the map using this, two maps together using that, like that, and remove the map like that. You can try those. So even it has divide like that, these are practice. We try those and see what happens. And those are methods. These are the operators available in the map data collections. So it's up to you to experiment with those. Then I will show you how to create a tuple. So it can create a tuple. Looking back at so for example, I want to have a tuple for x with three times. Let's say my name, maybe something like marks I have taken. So this is two element tuple. So when, when I refer them as x, it's return this two elements. So I can make that a tuple as maybe three elements. 
by giving a grade for these marks like that. So it's like three elements, like that. Uh, two column, after define that, I can access individual elements uh, using x all and underscore one will return the first element here. You see, and then two return the second element of the group. Three return the third element. Each element can be accessed like that. In the tube. So if you want to find a method to read maybe student names, student marks on the keyboard and create a table out of that. Perhaps I can uh, write a method for that, like uh, student like that. It won't take anything, but it return a tuple of maybe say, and in. So then what I would like to do is create a table here. I call smaller I call STDT and say read line refers to read the string and then I say L is capital. Case Scala is case sensitive language. Yes. So then I want to create a student out of that. STD. That it asks me to enter a name. And the mark. Sorry, I made a mistake. I enter a name here. Unfortunately, it's not shown the terminal. So it then marks. So similarly, I can create a student to check out. And then his marks. So you see. So S1 has. First record and it's two as second record. We group those two. Similarly, if you want to have another tuple here uh, to kind of like store store the grade of the students, we can create that. So we can kind of uh, define a method for create student like return string, then integer and maybe grade like string like that. And then read the marks and then grade them and store it in this tuple. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. So I will give them give it as exercise for you. You can try it yourself. Similarly and people has different methods few methods comparing to the other uh, collections it has this elements accessing and other methods but like a uh, list array map has huge set of operators and collections as you understood 
So these are the basic types of basic collection types available in Scala programming language. When, when we handle data in a function style, these collection types are very important. From next session onwards, you might really feel functional programming. So with that session, I have covered the fundamental of Scala programming language and fundamental of functional programming, that is pure functions and recursive functions. You know now how to do that. And you know how to use those to solve problems. And now you know basic collection types and so on. So in the next session on words, we will learn high order functions and different operators we can use on those functions such as map radius and so on. So the next set of lectures are kind of advanced topics on functional programming. So that I'll give kind of one big break in between. So you have to follow all my sessions and do all my activities posted in the LMS before I start the next session. Otherwise, you may feel uncomfortable following the next few sessions of this course because from next session onwards, I'm going to discuss advanced topics of functional programming.